weekly in-depth view of agriculture up close. This is In the Field. Today we are literally in the farmhouse with a good friend of mine, Luella Gregory, who traveled all the way um, down here to Southwest Missouri and we met up in a friend's kitchen <laughs> to talk about food. So Luella, take me through who you are and kind of um, what's sitting here behind us. Yeah, so it's, it's always fun to talk about food and farming and grew up on a farm. My son is the seventh generation in agriculture, so it's always been a part of our life and I've always loved to cook in the kitchen, so I love connecting those two, talking about food and farming. Well, today we're going to talk about um, a cookbook that you put together, and um, this ties in your love for agriculture, food, and, and your family into yes. these recipes. So what, how did this happen? Yeah, sure. So I've always wanted to do this. It's always been on my bucket list, and what I thought, you know, there isn't a cookbook out there that really highlights modern agriculture mm -hmm. in today's story, but I also wanted to highlight my family's heritage and how those farm, fa farm family values stay the same generation after generation, mm -hmm. but we add tools to our toolkit and how we can become more efficient over time. So I really want it to be more of a book, more than a book. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be a celebration of what agriculture is. And an educational tool for all those, you know, ticking in and really utilizing these recipes. Now give us some examples of what folks can learn um, besides just the recipes when, when you're talking about in the kitchen with you. There's a theme table talk throughout the book mm -hmm. that highlights ingredients on each page. So we talk about sweet corn versus field, co field mm -hmm. corn. We talk about poultry and beef and eggs and all of those good things. And the, how they relate to Missouri agriculture too, yes, right? Absolutely, because Missouri is so diverse. We have all different kinds of terrain across the state and lots of different um, agriculture. Well, today we're going to make a chicken tortilla soup and talk about those ingredients. So let's move over yeah, here sure. and kind of um, share with us uh, the background of these ingredients and some maybe those myths that you can bust when you're <laughs> talking about uh, cooking in the kitchen in Missouri agriculture. Yeah, so we're going to start with our chicken here. Mm -hmm. And we this is a great way to talk about today's uh, poultry farmers. So my grandma Luella, who I, my namesake, oh. you know, they had lots of chickens on the farm. And a lot of misconceptions, you know, that it's changed since she cooked, you know, yeah. in the 1950s. When in fact, we've just become better and we are better stewards of the land. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I talk about that in the book of why do chicken breasts look different now than they did when she was cooking in the 1950s. And it's not bad. It's mm -hmm. actually a blessing. But oftentimes that story gets... Um, many misconceptions. Absolutely, absolutely. And chicken is a staple in many homes because yes. it's, it's, it's convenient and it's easy. Um, you can do so many things with it. Absolutely, yeah. And so this, and then of course we have some base and uh, vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, Missouri is also home to lots of different vegetable and fruit production. We also have a broth and a cream base. I always like to uh, share the love with our dairy farmers. Absolutely. <laughs> and so uh, a cream and a And not just base. milk it's, or half and half. It's a, like a heavy cream. It is. It's mm -hmm. a heavy whipping cream. Um, I use this a lot as a base for soups. I also use it as a pasta sauce. You can make your own pasta sauce at home. Mm. Start with some butter, some cream. Really less is more. I think sometimes people overthink cooking and so it's just a, a few ingredients. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. A few ingredients um, keep stocked in your fridge and you can have some delicious food. So, yeah. Well, um, also, uh, corn production is big and, you know, you, we've got um, more, more of a sweet corn uh, in this recipe. So take us through the differences between, like, uh, uh, the fields of corn we see in Missouri. <laughs> sweet corn versus field corn. Yeah. So I grew up on a corn and soybean farm. Mm -hmm. So my dad still farms full time. So that was always a part of our life. A lot of people don't realize that there's a difference between field corn and sweet corn. Mm -hmm. So the sweet corn that we picked up in the grocery store... Um, versus field corn that most far you'll see in most farmers' fields, which actually is a livestock feed. Yeah. So it's a different variety of corn. A lot of people don't realize that. And then, of course, soybeans, huge crop in Missouri. Most of these guys go into livestock feed, but what people don't realize is that there's also byproducts that go into chocolate mm -hmm. and other products that we, we eat and we also use um, in everyday life. And so. I think we're going to slice into your grandmother's yes. chocolate cake here in a little bit. Yes, um, yes. And Missouri soybeans... Um, are used in uh, Nestle chocolate. Is that yes. what I heard you say? Yes, I was told that years ago that there's actually a path uh, between Missouri soybean farmers and a crushing facility that, that gets into to chocolate. That's, so a that's pretty fun awesome. Race. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Take yeah. pride in that. Yes. And then, sure. of course, wheat. Yes. Yes, yeah, so I don't know about you, but growing up, bread was always a staple at every meal. Every meal. And, you know, we have a lot of wheat in the state, and it's a great way to talk about wheat production and, and how that gets from the field to breads and other products made from wheat. 